Hello and welcome back everyone. I recently mounted an ER40 collet chuck for my Toolmaster lathe. The collet chuck was a D4 mount and I made an adapter to fit it on a D8 spindle. I now have the opportunity to make a second mount to fit a 5C collet chuck to the same lathe. The chuck I have is a Bison. I've had it for a while but I've never used it. I have some interesting lessons learned from this build and I'll share them at the end of the video. So, how do they compare? Well, let's find out. G'day, I'm Steve-O, and welcome to the Outback Shed. I still have a few spare faceplates, so I'm happy to convert this one to another backplate mount like I did for the ER chuck. I machined the backplate off camera as I've already made a video for that build. I'll put a link to it at the end of this video if you would like to see it. I now have two 350mm rings that I'll need to find another use for, maybe later. There are a few practical tests to do, so let's see how the chucks compare. I'll set the ER chuck up on the spindle, and I'll undertake all of the observations for this chuck, then change to the 5C chuck and repeat the observations, as this works well as not having to change the chucks between observations. The ER collet chuck is an M&G brand. They're not expensive, and they're very well made. I'll swap the observations around during editing to show each for the ER followed by the same for the 5C chucks as it makes more sense to see the same observation on both chucks before moving to the next. I'm using a MeasureMax textile indicator to measure the spindle run out to hundredths of a millimetre. Then I'll switch to a no brand textile indicator to go the next step and measure microns. There's very little movement shown on the hundredths indicator while the high res indicator is showing maybe half a micron. I redialed in this chuck off camera. It was very time consuming and fiddly, but that doesn't make for interesting viewing. However, after a lot of patience, I got the best result I could. I changed the mounting cap screws for the ER chuck from stainless to hardened steel after reading the comments from a viewer left on the previous video. The bison chuck, as we know, is the standard on lathe chucks. The indicators show the same run out as for the ER chuck, about half a micron. Moving it to another part of the taper shows the same result. I have a set of high accuracy ER40 collets. The standard collets are rated to 0.015mm. These are rated 0.008mm. Thank you. 
I've mounted a 16mm solid carbide end mill in the collet. This is Neman G dial indicator, which I've had very good results from, and I have a more on right micron indicator, which is a well known brand. There's barely a flicker in the needle on the hundreds indicator. I have both metric and imperial 5C collets. The imperial set has increments of 1 16th of an inch. This is the metric set. They came in plastic tubes which I quickly discarded and I made this box for them. I also have some hex collets. They haven't had much use and most of them are still in their plastic bags. It's worth noting that these are not hardened or similar branded collets. In fact, these are not branded collets. The 5C chuck has enough of its body in front of the mounting plate that I can get an indicator onto it. The chuck body shows a flicker in the needle, but I don't think it's good enough to mount without the set true feature. I think that was well worth the extra work needed. The hundreds indicator shows no movement, the micron indicator barely a flicker and I have to say that I didn't expect that. But I don't accept zero and I'll consider this to be about half a micron. This is just too small a value to be true. I've set up an old 20mm arbor in the ER chuck. It's the best I have at the size. The hundreds indicator shows only a slight movement. The micron indicator, although difficult to get into position, shows very little movement, but not zero.
for the 5C, there is more movement evident in both indicators than was seen for the ER. I've installed a 25mm test bar into the ER chuck and I'll make some observations at three points. Close to the collet nose, 50mm from the collet nose and 100mm from the collet nose. It's looking like 5 microns at the collet nose, maybe 6 or 7 at 50 millimetres, and 8 or 9 at 100, but that's all less than a hundredth of a millimetre. There are differences in the observations, and that would indicate possible actual runout. This may be in the choke, or it may be in the collet, or a combination of both. Repeating the observations on the 5C chuck, the results follow the same pattern. It has been suggested to grind the chuck seat on the back plate, but I don't have the equipment for that 
and I'm not sure it would make any difference anyway. Another interesting observation is to lock a bar into the collet and apply a force at say 150mm from the collet nose then measure the deflection at 100mm. This is a 19mm piece of stainless 304 bar, so it should be rigid. I attach the suitcase scale to the tool post so I can wind out the top slide and apply 20 kg force. Then measure the deflection at 100 mm from the collet nose. The same observation on the 5C chuck yielded slightly less deflection. The real measurement is in the performance of the collet during work. I've set up a length of 20mm 2011 aluminium bar stock and I'll machine 100mm length, then measure the diameter at each end. The lathe is running at 635 rpm with a feed rate of 0.06 mm per rev with a cutting depth of 1 mm. I'm using a high speed steel tool bit and this is a roughing cut, not a fine finishing cut. For the ER chuck, the measurements at each end of the bar are the same. I repeated the observation for the 5C chuck and the results are the same. 
there is no difference between the measurements at each end. All in all, I'm happy with the builds. I used an end mill, an old arbor and a test bar. It would have been preferable to use gauge pins, but I don't have a set. The 5C collets I have are not branded, but they did provide some good outcomes and I'm very happy with them. The indicators often did not agree on what they were measuring. A small movement of the 100s indicator was at times followed by a 1000s indicator that visibly appeared disproportionate, which raises the question, which would you believe? The test dial indicators I have are not good enough at this level, except for the more and right. I think maybe it's time to invest in some metal toya or similar indicators. To put things into perspective, although I do have air conditioning in the shed, I don't have climate control. This is not a class 3 clean room. It is a shed and it's subject to dust, temperature and humidity changes. For example, it was 38 degrees outside for some of the project, then the temperature dropped to under 30. What shows as one micron today likely won't tomorrow. Chasing zeros was fine once, but it's not something I would repeat anytime soon. I have heard from people who reset their grip trues every three months, and while that might work for some, I don't think I'll be doing that. One viewer even commented that even breathing on it can change the observation. Well, I'd better be really careful then, hadn't I? These are observations that I got in my shed, on my equipment, with my indicators and local conditions. You would likely see different results in your shed and on your equipment. It's also important to put a witness mark on the back plate to line up with the registration mark on the spindle. This ensures that the chuck is fitted to the spindle in the same location each time. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video and found it of value. If so, please consider subscribing if you haven't already and give it the thumbs up. Be productive, be creative, but most importantly, be safe in your shed. Catch you next time.